So for the last couple of days, I've been using the Vivaldi web browser, and I have some thoughts. So I've taken a look at this before, but I don't think I've ever done a proper video on it. And I've honestly have had some thoughts on Vivaldi, which I've shared in videos before, but I've never actually, you know, spent any good amount of time in the browser. So I thought it was about time I did so, because Vivaldi is one of those browsers that have a lot of fans. Like, it has a very large collection of users who are very passionate about Vivaldi, and I wanted to find out why. So, I installed it, which was an interesting adventure, seeing as how there's not a package for it on Fedora by default. You have to install their own repository, which is fine. It worked out okay, but it's not exactly the way I want to install software. I don't want to install some random repository off the internet, like a PPA. It gives me nightmares but you know i did it and i installed it so i've been using it now for a couple days now and i have some thoughts so that's what we're going to talk about today let's go ahead and jump in so let's start off with the positive stuff first because i have some negative things as you might expect and we'll cover those but in the guise of being a positive person i'm going to talk about the positive things first so the first thing that I really, really enjoy is the UI customization. So one of the things that I do on Firefox, and you've seen me do this, is that I customize the UI. And Firefox allows you to customize it via CSS, and you, it basically opens it up so you can basically do anything with the UI that you want. Now, Vivaldi's not that permissive when it comes to actually customizing the UI. You, you are constrained to what they let you do, but... They do let you do a lot more when it comes to UI customization than something like Chrome or Brave or whatever. So that's really nice. So I have it set it up now so that I have the tabs along the bottom and I have the URL bar along the top. Now, there are several other combinations that you can do. So you can have the tabs along either of the sides if you want. So there are some options there when it comes to customization, which I really like. Another thing that I found that I highly enjoy is actually their quick actions panel. So if you press F2 while on any page, you get this little pop-up window and it allows you to do many different things along with opening new windows, new tabs, customize the toolbar, go into full screen mode, see the task manager, get to the settings, extensions, history, notes, bookmarks, the welcome tour for whatever reason that is in here. You can also delete browsing data from here, show the bookmarks bar from here, see the status bar from here. It just goes on and on. You can even change themes from here so that is a really nice little piece of ui design that i've never seen before in another browser it's just really nice the problem here is that this is not discoverable i someone to, on mastodon told me about this and that's how i knew about it as far as i'm aware unless you dive into the help documents you don't know, even know that this is going to exist unless you stumble upon it. So that's a little bit disappointing. But like I said, the fact that this is, exists, it's really nice. And uh, I, I find myself using it quite often to change, open up new windows and go, open up the bookmarks bar. Even though there is a key binding for the bookmarks bar, I've been doing it from here. It just feels, I don't know, a little bit different. It's kind of like opening a Rofia and opening up a, a application to Rofia. It's It was something different at least. So I liked that a lot. Another thing that I really found that I liked was the ability to tile web pages. So this is now you wouldn't think that you know because I use a tiling you know window manager so I can open up a you know none of the window side by side if I want to. So tiling is not anything new to me or something that I can't do. But Vivaldi allows you to tile web pages. So if you select web pages like so and then right click on them and then do tile two tabs, you get those web pages side by side and you can interact with them just by moving the mouse. There's key bindings move back and forth. And it's really, really nice if you, especially if you have a big screen where having two things side by side makes a lot of sense. This allows you to have two things side by side without opening up a whole nother browser, which is, like I said, very useful if, if you're working in the browser a lot, having, say, Google Docs on one side and the website you're messing around with on the other side is, is just highly useful. And as far as I'm, I know... This is the only browser that has that. This is going to be probably the premier feature that I'm going to miss when I switch away from Vivaldi because I really like this. I even went and looked in Firefox to find if there's an extension that lets you do this. And there was one, looked really shady, didn't download it. But, but other than that, there doesn't seem to be a way to get this functionality in any other browser, which is a little disappointing. But again, this is just fantastic. Now, 
One of the things that I haven't been able to figure out is if there's a way to tile so they're not just side by side. If I wanted to do, a, say, a horizontal split instead of a vertical split, there doesn't seem to be a way to do that, at least that I've found so far. So that's one area where this could improve, but the fact that you can tile them side by side is still just very a very nice feature. So another thing that I really like about this is that there are a lot of settings. Now, so everybody who watches this channel knows that I love to customize basically everything. So the fact that there are a lot of customizations when it comes to look and feel and how the browser works is something that I'm really interested in going through and I have over the last couple of days. So in terms of appearance, there's a lot of stuff here that you can change you can even change it so that the settings app itself has different you know behavior and stuff like that which is nice you can also choose different scroll bars and there's some accessibility stuff here you can change the menu position and the menu icon style you can change the default zoom a lot of this stuff is in other browsers as well but when you add up all the stuff that allows you to do in terms of themes and how the tabs behave and where they're located and where the panel, the status panels are, where the address bar is. I mean, you can do basically anything with this browser and put stuff wherever you want. And it's just, it's fantastic, especially for a browser that doesn't really allow you to customize stuff in a traditional way like Firefox does. So Firefox has the more traditional config file that you can configure stuff in, uh, at least when it comes to like the UI, right? If you want to customize the UI with Firefox outside of a theme, you would have to use CSS. Now, Firefox does have plenty of, th of settings itself, but it doesn't go to the extent that Vivaldi does. Now, just like with KDE, you can take the number of settings you have and go a little bit too far, but I don't feel that Vivaldi has done that. They seem to have done a fairly good job of maintaining a balance between f settings and actual functionality, at least when it comes to the browser. We'll talk about the other stuff that they have here in a minute. The greatest thing, okay, hold on a second. Earlier I said that the F2 functionality wasn't discoverable. It's right here in the settings. I completely missed it. I don't know, I don't know what I thought quick commands was. Does it say quick commands even when you do this? No, see it just says commands. So I was looking for commands I didn't, I didn't make the correlation there. I, I'm, I'm an idiot. But anyways, so I take that back. The quick commands is in fact discoverable because it's right in the settings. But if you don't go splunking into the settings, you probably wouldn't see that. So maybe my point still does stand a little bit. But anyways, the point is, is there's a lot of settings here and they haven't done a horrible job of making them discoverable. There is a search bar up there if you want to do search for settings, but you'd have to know what to search for. So settings is very good. So those are the positive things that I have for you. There are a few other minor things that are fine. Like it, it does a good job of actually browsing the web. I didn't notice that it was overly slow. It works fine with Google Docs, at least as fine as Firefox does. And it just, it's a very proficient web browser and I enjoyed it. So those are the positive things, like I said, and let's talk now a little bit about the negative things that I've experienced and some of the things that are still kind of holding me back from actually liking this browser. So the first one, let's get the elephant out of the room just a little bit. Vivaldi is not open source, and you can listen to their developers and they'll tell you that Vivaldi is based 95% on open source technologies. And that may be true, but it's the other 5%, the stuff that sits on top of the open source code that bugs me and bugs most open source enthusiasts, okay? If 5% of your code is proprietary, then the entire thing is proprietary, especially when it's the thing that you interact with. Like the UI here is completely proprietary and that's what you interact with. You don't interact with the other stuff. All of that stuff is lower end, non-user space stuff. So the fact that you, uh, you know, have a proprietary browser basically is a big deal for me. I prefer open source stuff and I, that's the reason why I use Firefox despite the fact that I have many problems with Firefox. So that's the big one, right? That's the big thing that, you know, I was not happy about. But outside of that, there are still a couple other things that I just really don't care for. So first, and this one's also pretty big, is that Vivaldi, they seem to be very interested in making this your one-stop shop for everything. So if you notice when we went into the settings, there is down here for mail, calendar, and feeds. My web browser doesn't need mail, calendar, or feeds. Now, feeds makes sense to me. I could deal with that because that's stuff that's a feed from web pages makes sense to be in a browser. I could deal with that. 
but mail and calendar, while both things that you can do in a browser, I prefer to have separated out into other applications. Now, maybe I'm just the weird one here. Maybe everyone else likes their browser to be the one-stop shop for everything that they do, but to me that just feels like it's putting your eggs all in one basket. I much prefer to have my mail separated from my web browser. That's why I don't use webmail. I use a native client. I don't use Google Calendar. I use a standalone calendar that uses, you know, Caldev or whatever it's called. And, you know, just, I don't want those things in my browser. And the thing is, is that when you're talking about all of the stuff that they're cramming in here, it starts to feel less like a web browser, more like an office suite. And that's a big problem for me because I don't want to use an office. I mean, can you imagine if Microsoft Word was also your web browser? Yeah, that doesn't sound like a very good experience. Now, I'll be 100% honest with you. I haven't used the mail calendar or feeds aspect of Vivaldi. I have no interest in doing so, so I just didn't do it. And uh, I, I still won't be doing that. Even if I were to have Vivaldi stay on my computer, I am not going to use those things. I just... Those things don't go in a web browser for me. Now, like I said, I may be weird with this. Some other people may enjoy this. I, in fact, I know people who enjoy Vivaldi like to have all of their stuff here in one place. I do not. So that bugs me. Another thing, and this one's more minor, is that there doesn't seem to be a way to turn off the buttons up here for when you're in a window manager. Like, we don't need these buttons. These are for when you're in a floating window manager. I wish those things could go away along with the title. Now, it's possible that there is a place in the settings somewhere and I just haven't spotted it or it's named in a odd way. Like, you can control the position of the controls, but there's no option there for turning them off completely. I just want them to be gone. But again, that's more minor because not everybody uses a tiling window manager, so... Uh, having those off is probably a little weird for most people. Now, I should go actually go back to one of the positive things is that Vivaldi does have built-in ad blocking, and it's probably the best built-in ad blocking that I've seen yet. Now, usually, the built-in ad blockers are kind of subpar, especially when it comes to video ads. Now, that's where Vivaldi actually works really well, because if you're on YouTube and you view YouTube videos, usually things like Brave or even the ad blocking in something like cute browser they just don't work on ad in video ads they just they just don't vivaldi does and that's actually real good now i don't think that this is actually uBlock origin someone told me that this was uBlock origin that was built in i don't think that that's actually true i think it's just a uh, uh ad blocking or host list or something like that that they've blocked that works actually really well so they've done a good job for it not blink being uBlock origin so kudos to them for that now, one, th one feature that is missing, or at least that I haven't found, is tab groups. Now, Chrome itself does offer tab groups. I know Brave does as well because they're basically the same browser. But I have not found tab groups in Vivaldi. Now, I don't know if that's just because I've missed it, which is possible, or if it's just not here. Now, they do have something called stacking tabs, which is really weird. So if you s select multiple tag tabs, you can... Do, use uh, stack tabs. I'm not sure why this is useful, to be honest with you. If anything, it just feels like it's um, wasting space a little bit. So I'm not sure what that feature actually is, but I did not see tab groups here anywhere. And that is one feature that I'd absolutely have to have. Now, I'm there are tab group extensions for Chrome, which would then work in Vivaldi, so that's not that big of a deal, but still, it's something that I was kind of shocked that it's not here, given the fact that they seem to have every other feature. And again, I may just be missing it. It's possible. Now, there are a couple other things that I haven't really used that I see are here. So there's one thing here called Periodic Reload, which seems to be useful if you're constantly refreshing a page for like a package or something like that. You could have it reload for you. At a frequent interval, so you can choose one, two, five, ten, or thirty minutes. That's kind of cool. That's not something that I've ever seen before. Another thing that they have is the ability to hibernate background tabs. Now, I don't know if this is something that you can do automatically. It seems more like something that should be done automatically, but you can if you want. Have if you have a whole bunch of tabs and you know you're only ever going to use one for a little while, you could hibernate the rest so they don't use a lot of resources. So that is a also a very uh, good feature that they have built in. So that is Vivaldi, and I have some final thoughts here. So I've had a very negative outlook on Vivaldi 
the biggest reason is because it's not open source. So I judge it based on that. And I, it's not just Vivaldi that I judge. I, I judge Chrome just as much because it's not open source. I judge Opera or whatever because it's not open source. So I, I, I'm very judgy. I'm a very judgmental person and I, I can't help it. So I think the biggest reasons why I talk about Vivaldi so much about it not being open source is because they claim so hard that it's close to open source. And I don't know what everybody else feels about this, but if you're close to open source, you're not actually open source. So that's just not the way it feels to me. Like <laughs> either you are open source or you're not open source. Using it all open source doesn't make sense to me. Now, there's obvious, 100% obvious arguments against my outlook on this because Linux itself then would not qualify as open source because it has proprietary blobs in the kernel. So I understand that my argument here is flawed. It's just when it comes to Vivaldi, I think that they're rhetoric on it just kind of rubs me the wrong way because I, I don't know it, it feels like they're so proud of them themselves being based 95 percent off open source and also I'm, I'm not understand i don't really understand why the rest of it can't be open sourced and then it would just remove that argument against vivaldi but i'm sure that they have their own reasons so just beyond that that's the reason why i've had this kind of mental negative block towards vivaldi for many years but honestly, I could get past that because I use proprietary stuff all the time. You know, I use an Android phone, which is based majorly on proprietary software. I use a whole bunch of Google applications. So I am not one to talk when it comes to anti-proprietary stuff. You know, I will use proprietary stuff if it's, you know, good. So the fact that Vivaldi is proprietary is not my only reason. My biggest reason is the one that I talked about before. And that is that it feels like an office suite to me. Like it has too many things in there that I don't really care for my browser to have. Now, you don't have to use them, obviously, and it's not pushy. That's one thing that I will give them credit for is that after the initial setup where it tells you that it has these features, it doesn't come, keep popping up. Hey, use our mail browser or our mail client. Hey, use our feed thing. It doesn't do that. I haven't seen one mention of them outside of the settings since I started using it, which is, again... A credit to them for not being pushy about it so if i wanted to use vivaldi i could use it and just ignore those things but there's this just it would live in the back of my head right it would say why is this stuff here why is this stuff here it's just that it would, it would gnaw at me just constantly and it would ruin my experience overall i think so that is the reason why I don't use Vivaldi is because it feels like it has a whole bunch of stuff in there that I just don't need. Anyways, that's it for this video. If you have thoughts on Vivaldi, you can leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. you can, I'm sure there are some people out there that really, really like it, Vivaldi that are upset that I don't also like Vivaldi. I'm going to end this video on saying use what you like to use. I prefer Firefox. I didn't have a horrible time with Vivaldi. I just don't like all those extra stuff plus i'm also very invested in being able to edit my ui via css i'm not sure if that's something you can actually do with vivaldi i don't think it is so i'm kind of invested in firefox as it is right now so plus also tab groups man tab groups are the thing that i definitely need so there are reasons beyond just the fact that it's not open source so anyways comments in the comment section below if you like or dislike vivaldi i'd love to hear from you you can follow me on mastodon or odyssey those links will be in the video description you can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. Links for YouTube and the bear pay will be in the video description. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just will not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very much for your support. I truly do appreciate it. You guys are all amazing. Thanks to everybody for watching. I'll see you 